What's up everybody, welcome to another video and I hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. This summer semester I'm teaching college algebra and it looks like I'm gonna be doing the same in the fall. So this video as well as my next several videos are going to be instructional videos focused on topics from college algebra and maybe some review topics as well. I really wanna complete my playlist for algebra so I can give the whole thing to my students as a resource for them to use outside of class. So I'm trying to knock that out. So bear with me, a lot of algebra videos coming your way but we're gonna start off with solving linear equations involving fractions. And I already have a couple of videos with solving linear equations in general. A link will pop up right there if you want some more examples. But we're gonna specifically focus in this video on equations like this that involve fractions because I found that my students, especially this semester, needed some review of how to solve these kind of equations and how to find common denominators and that sort of thing. So that's exactly how we're gonna approach this equation is how we approach any equation involving fractions, which is our first step, our first priority is always, how can we get rid of these fractions? How can we eliminate these fractions? Because an equation is just much easier to solve when there are no fractions involved than when there are, right? So it turns out that we can eliminate these fractions by multiplying both sides of this equation by something. And that something turns out to be the least common denominator of the two fractions. Right? And another way to think of the least common denominator, if you need a review, is that is just the least common multiple of the denominators. Right, So we can actually find the least common denominator that way by listing out all the multiples of 2. That's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, etc. And listing out the multiples of 5, we have 5, 10, 15, 20, etc. So we're looking for multiples they share in common. So like 10, 20 would be one. If we kept going, we'd reach 20. Uh, 30 would be another, right? So those are examples, but we're specifically looking for the least multiple they have in common, which in this case is 10. And it turns out that 10 is the least common denominator between one half and one fifth. And so that's gonna be our magic number that we can multiply both sides of this equation by. And it's gonna, in one step, clear all the fractions. It's really a a beautiful thing. So this is a method you can use to find the least common denominator. If you don't like this method, you have a different one. Maybe you can do it in your head. That's fine too. I just wanted to show that method for anyone who needed a very quick review. So we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by 10. So big parentheses times 10 times 10. Look how beautifully this works out. Remember this 10 distributes goes to both of these terms. So to the first term, we have 10 divided by two, that's five, right? Two goes into 10 five times. So this actually cancels and simplifies to five X minus 10 over five, that's two. Five goes into 10 two times, minus two X equals three times 10, that is 30. And look how we took that ugly equation involving fractions that we didn't know how to deal with and now turn it into a simple linear equation, which we can solve in a couple more steps. First, by combining these like terms, we get 3x equals 30, then dividing both sides by 3, and we get x equals 10. So we're going to work out a few more examples. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so here's our next example, and I encourage you, pause the video, pull out a scratch piece of paper and pencil, and try this on your own if you want to get some practice. Then skip ahead or press play to check your answer. So again, looking at the fractions involved in this equation, we have one half and three fourths. So let's list out the multiples. We use the same strategy we used before. So these are the multiples of two, multiples of four. And we actually already noticed we have our least common multiple. And I wanted to point out this example for this reason is that any integer is a multiple of itself, right? Four times one is four. So this four, is still a common multiple with this four, and it turns out that that is the least common multiple between two and four, is four. So that's gonna work as our least common denominator, which is the number we're gonna multiply both sides of this equation by to get rid of all these fractions involved, times four, times four. So let's look at this left-hand side, four over two, that's two, right? Two goes into four two times. So we get two X here, minus five times four, that's 20, which equals, look how nice this is, four cancels with the four. No need to do four times three is 12, and then 12 divided by four is three. Just notice immediately, four 
over four. Those are gonna cancel out, right? And we're gonna be left with three X. All right, so now we just have to solve this linear equation. Looks a lot better than what we started with, so let's go ahead and solve it. I'm gonna subtract two X from both sides. So minus two X from both sides. So these guys here cancel. I have negative 20 equals three X minus two X, which gives me just X. So that's actually the solution to this linear equation is negative 20. So in this example, we have an equation that involves three different fractions. So this time, in order to figure out what we need to multiply both sides of this equation by in order to get rid of all these fractions, we need to list out all of the multiples of two, the multiples of six, and the multiples of nine and find the least common multiple between all three of those integers. So that process can be a little bit tedious. So what I'm gonna do at this point is offer an alternate method for finding the least common denominator between these three fractions, which is again, the number we're gonna multiply both sides of this equation by. So here's the method. We're gonna do what's called a prime factorization on each of these integers. So you very commonly see this by drawing a tree. So looking at nine, let's draw a little tree and let's break nine down into factors. And we're gonna keep breaking those factors down until we have a product of all prime factors. So nine can be broken into three and three, and it turns out three is prime, so we're done. Three times three is nine, so that is the prime factorization of nine. Similarly, with six, that's three times two. Both of those are prime, so six cannot be broken down any further and two just stays two, so I'll just copy it down there, okay? Now what we're gonna do is identify all the unique factors that show up throughout these denominators. And in this case, those unique factors are two and three, right? Those are the two factors that show up throughout these denominators. Now our third step is we're gonna look at each factor. So let's start here at two, okay? So we're gonna consider two, and we're gonna look in each denominator and see what is the most number of times, what is the biggest number of times two shows up in any given denominator. So here it shows up once, we have one factor of two here, we have one factor of two here, we have zero here. So the biggest number, the most number of times this shows up as a factor in any given denominator is one. So we're gonna write a one here. What about three? What is the most number of times this shows up in any given denominator? Well, here we have zero, here we have one, here we have two. So the most number this shows up, the biggest number is twice. So we have two factors of three that we need, right? And it turns out that two to the first power times three to the second power is our least common denominator, which equals 18. So you may like the way of listing out the factors better. Maybe that was quicker for you or makes more sense. I like this way. I find that this works better when there are three or more fractions or when the denominators get really big and it's hard to kind of do that in your head. I find this way is better. This way also translates a lot better to solving rational equations, which is going to be a, another video very soon. Where we're going to solve rational equations where we have our denominators instead of integers, they're polynomials. So it gets a little trickier to think about. So I do like this method, but we found the least common denominator is 18, which is really the goal. So Whatever method you use to find that, continue to do it, whatever works for you. But now what we're gonna do is multiply both sides of this equation by 18. 18, okay? So let's look at the left-hand side here. 18 to that first term, two goes into 18 nine times. So the 18 cancels with the two and we have nine X. Let's see, now 18, again, don't multiply 18 by five and then try to figure out how many times six goes into whatever that result is, 90, right? Don't do that. Instead, just look at 18 and look at six. Six goes into 18 three times, right? So the 18 is gonna cancel with the six and simplify to be a three. And when you multiply that three times five, you get 15. So we're gonna be left with 15x. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, 18 over six gives us three. So really what we have is three times five times X, 15 X, okay? Uh, let's see, the one over nine and the 18, 18 divided by nine is two because nine goes into 18 two times. And now we have this linear equation that we can solve by combining the like terms on the left-hand side here. So nine minus 15 gives us negative six X equals two and then divide both sides by negative six, and we get x equals, let's see, two over six can be reduced to one over three, 
So negative one third, okay? And that's our solution. So hopefully that made sense. We're gonna do one last example for you to practice. All right, so our last example is another equation involving three different fractions. And at this point, I really encourage you, pause the video, try this on your own. See if you can do it on your own. Press play when you wanna check your answer. I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into it. We gotta find the least common denominator between these three fractions. I'm gonna use the way that I used in the last example. I'm gonna use that method, which is do a prime factorization on each of these denominators. So I'm gonna go ahead and start doing that. I feel like this method, I use this method, especially when there are three or more integers that I have to find the least common multiple between. I feel like this is the quickest. So three times two gives us six, okay? What gives us 12? Let's see, six times two, but then I have to break down six because six is not prime, right? Three times two is six. So I keep breaking these numbers down until my result is a product of prime numbers, which in this case is this. Three times two times two equals 12, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Eight can be broken down into four and two. Four can be broken down into two and two. So I've written each of these integers as a product of prime integers. Now what I'm gonna do is identify all the unique factors. We have three and two, three, two, 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 two. So it's really just two and three again, just like the last example. Two and three are my unique prime factors that show up throughout these denominators. And now we need to identify what is the largest number of times this two shows up as a factor in any given denominator here, right? So here we have one, two, here we have two twos, and here we have three twos, so three. Now we need to do the same thing with three. Here we have one of those, one of those, zero. So we need one, three. So two to the third times three to the first is my least common denominator. Let's see, two to the third is two, four, eight times three, that is 24. And that is the number that we're gonna multiply both sides of this equation by to eliminate all of the fractions, okay? So maybe you like this method. If you do, I encourage you to use it, especially when we have three or more fractions involved and especially as these numbers get bigger and bigger i encourage this method but if you want to do some kind of guess and check or list out the multiples whatever method works for you okay so now that we have 24 as our least common denominator we're just going to multiply both sides of this equation by 24 and we should get a nice linear equation as a result that does not involve any fractions so on the left hand side we have times 24 on the right hand side, we have times 24. So what is 24 divided by six? So let's see, six goes into 24 four times. So four X, 24 times one over 12. So 12 goes into 24 two times. So this simplifies to two, that 24 over 12 is just two, right? So remember, I'm distributing this 24 to both of these terms. So I still have a plus here and then I have 24 divided by eight. So eight goes into 24 three times. So my result is three X. Now I simplify this equation. Subtract three X from both sides. Four X minus three X is just X, which equals two. And that is the solution to this equation. So see how easy it gets once you eliminate all those fractions. That's why it's so important to understand this process. But hopefully this video helped. If it did, hit like, subscribe, leave a comment below letting me know what else you want to see. But most importantly, don't forget to flex those brain muscles and I'll see y'all later.